What's up guys and welcome to part 2 of my War Thunder patch 1.37 preview. In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about what has changed in regards to flight models and core game mechanics. Now I'm going to start off with something I thought was one of the most exciting changes to see in the patch. And uh, you can see I'm going really fast with my Zero. This is the A6M3. It's the regular one and I'm actually pulling up all the way as much as I can on my elevator right now. I'm pressing S. This is as fast as I'm turning. So it appears that the devs finally added elevator control stiffening to the A6M3 series. So in effect what the high control forces that they've added to the A6M3 series will do is once your speed hits around 400 kilometers per hour your elevators will start to stiffen up a lot. You'll make very lazy turns and once your speed hits around 500 kilometers per hour your elevator will become extremely stiff and it'll become almost impossible to pull out of a dive and once your speed hits about 600 kilometers per hour you're essentially a dead man unless you did what I did there and just go into a shallow dive that I know I can pull out of a lot of people have been calling this compressibility but I'm not really convinced it lacks any of the telltale signs of compressibility like violent buffeting and uh, buzzing of the control surfaces at high speeds and I don't I just don't think it's at a high enough speed for the airplane to begin to suffer from compressibility I think this is just high control forces from going really fast like the Zeros actually did suffer from this is why planes like the Hellcat and the F4U Corsair were able to outturn the Zero in real life past 300 miles per hour and uh, that's what I think they're trying to model in game. It very well could be their attempt to model compressibility, it's just in a very early state and it doesn't have very many features yet. So I could be wrong, but I think it's just high control forces. But regardless of whether it's high control forces or compressibility, I think you're going to be seeing a lot of this from cocky Japanese pilots that aren't used to realistic flight physics. And this. And this. Ah, seeing a Zero's control surfaces lock up is such a refreshing sight. But, unfortunately, it's not all the Zeros. The A6M5 still has zero control forces modeled. You can pull as tight of a turn as it wants at whatever speed you want. And uh, the A6M2 is the same way. But at least the A6M2. It always, in my experience, has had aileron stiffening at high speeds, but it can still pull as high G turns as you want at any speed. The ailerons are tough to roll at high speeds, but the elevator is not hard to turn. Speaking of completely ahistorical Navy fighters, the Hellcat got a new flight model. Now its engine works. <laughs> That's basically it. it. I think it turns a little bit better, but it seems to roll about the same. It's climbing basically like it should. And uh, the manifold pressure gauge I think is still busted because I'm pretty sure it says I'm getting 75 inches of manifold pressure. And uh, I'm not even wepping, so I don't think that's right. Another thing about this aircraft is that it's lost all ability to stall properly. At least this is what I was told because I did not, unfortunately, I did not get a chance to test it for myself because I did not have access to my joystick while I was in the dev server. But I do believe them because so many other planes that the devs are touching nowadays are losing all stall characteristics for whatever reason. And uh, that's not a good thing. But everything else about this plane seems to be pretty good. It doesn't fall out of the sky anymore once you try to get into a turn fight at low altitudes which is a good sign. You can actually do a, a few rotations without having the fear of being at the bottom of the ocean in the next turn. And uh, I was really enjoying flying this thing. One thing I was looking forward to seeing is whether or not the P-47 now dived or zoomed as well as I think it should. But unfortunately it seemed to zoom and dive around the same as it currently does on the December 3rd build of the dev server and uh, I was hearing some good things about it but unfortunately I was getting the same numbers as I was previously so it doesn't seem to have changed any in regards to dive performance or zoom climb performance aka energy retention and just for fun I thought I'd check out the new duck 
and see how that handles. Of course, it's not the uh, aspect of the plane that most people are going to be looking to. That is. But, nevertheless, I decided I'd check out the handling characteristics of the plane, and if you have flown the other HS-129, and then you fly this one, this HS-129 will make the first one, without the big cannon, look like a Spitfire. <laughs> this plane handles terribly. <laughs> it's awful. This plane can barely get off the runway. It kicks like a mule every time you fire it, and it it handles like a pig. An absolute pig. It's impossible to use this thing in air-to-air -air combat. So, you're a real daredevil if you try uh, to get griefing kills on airplanes with this thing. Both the LA-9 and the KI-84 seem to be going far too slow, at least at sea level, from the little bit of testing I did. Both only reaching speeds barely above 500 kilometers per hour. One of the things that I noticed when doing my testing was that I almost always overheated my oil or water, many times within 5 minutes to 10 minutes. And uh, so uh, I think the only conclusion I can gather from this is that the days of info wepping may actually be drawing to a close. And some bad news for all you jet jockeys, the Sabre and the MiG-15 both seem to be climbing the same and both had the same high speed roll performance as they do in the current build of War Thunder. I was informed that the Sabre F models and the MiG-15 were both supposed to get entirely new flight models, and that they did, but unfortunately my testing leaded to the results that they were pretty much exactly the same as they currently are. However, this is on the December 3rd build of the dev server, and it may have been different on an earlier build. Sometimes they take files in and out, and uh, they may have done that here. And I've got a few updates for you Hawker aircraft fans. The Typhoon is no longer taking 4 to 10 weeks to take off from an airfield. You see I just throttled up and I'm already taking off. No need to warm it up with 40% throttle and then go to 100% when it starts moving. You just throttle it up and go. I didn't really check to see if it had a completely different flight model or not, but the takeoff is definitely improved. Something I'm very excited about also happened. The Tempest now can turn, roll, do all that jazz. While it's still no turn fighter, it's much improved on what it was. Its roll rate is finally tolerable, it finally rolls better than a G8N1, and it's just, it's just an amazing plane now. I think it finally lives up to its legend. And it's just a thing of beauty. However, as always, I'm comparing things with their real-life counterparts, and I've already noticed one problem with the Tempest 5's new flight model. It's too damn fast. <laughs> That's about it. It's going about 638 kilometers per hour at sea level, when it should be doing about 605. Also, I did not test the climb rate, so I'm not sure how it's doing in that regards. I'll have to do a complete new flight model review later. And of course my most anticipated plane, the Tempest 2. This plane is pretty pretty similar to the Tempest 5 as it was in real life. It's just a little bit faster, it climbs a little bit better, it rolls about the same, and it turns maybe slightly inferior to the Tempest 5. But this is all consistent with the real life data, so I'm pretty happy with this plane. And I will be definitely getting to a flight model review of this eventually as well. And one more interesting thing that I noticed about this plane was that it seems to have compressibility or high control forces modeled at least slightly because at a certain speed I seem to get my elevators to lock up. I think it's, if I remember correctly, it's around 600 kilometers per hour and at that speed the elevator will be very stiff and you'll pull very loose turns and it's really weird because you can be going faster than that speed and pull as hard of a turn as you want. You can pull as tight as you want until you hit that that certain speed and then your elevator will tighten up but I'm sure since this is an early build of whatever sort of physics this is supposed to be it's a little bit buggy at the current state and I'm sure it'll get better as time progresses so I wouldn't worry about it too much and it may even be fixed by the time the patch goes live so we'll have to see about that alright that's unfortunately all I have for you in this one Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in my next one.